The first thing we'll do with the yum module is use it to install a package. The package I'd like to install is Redis, which is a popular open source in-memory database that's often used as a cache. I'll create a comment here, install Redis. Now I'm fairly familiar with CentOS and I know we're gonna have some issues here. If I search for Redis related packages on CentOS with yum search Redis, what we're going to get by default is just a single package available, which is this performance copilot metrics for Redis, which is not what we want. We just want the Redis package. What we need to install is this EPEL repository. EPEL stands for Extra Packages for Enterprise Linux, and it's a special repository of packages that has extra packages for Red Hat and CentOS. And this is going to contain our Redis package. If I jump back over, what I'll do is I'll create another comment, which is install EPEL repo. Let's go ahead and install the EPEL repo. I'll convert this into an Ansible task. And luckily what we can actually do is install the EPEL repo using the YUM module. We'll use the YUM module and I'll set the name to EPEL release, which is the name of the package on CentOS 7. We need to set the state to present to make sure that it's installed. And finally, one thing that I always recommend doing with the YUM module and the apt module is to set update cache to true. Finally, since we're managing packages on the system, we're going to need root permissions, so I'll set become to true. Let's run this playbook against our hosts now, and we'll see what happens. So that playbook's finished running now, and I can see that it's failed against our Ubuntu Bionic host. And originally I thought the reason would be because we're using the yum module, and the yum package manager won't be available on Ubuntu. Actually, Ansible's been smart enough to apply the apt package manager, which is available, but we get the error message saying no package matching EPL release is available. And this demonstrates why I suggest always splitting your package related tasks based on the operating system. Because even if Ansible is smart enough to apply the correct package manager, it can't know the correct name of the package or whether it's even available on that operating system. In the apt module tutorial, I went over a couple of strategies to split your tasks based on the operating system. And I'll go over them again here, just in case you haven't seen that tutorial. The first thing that we can do is change our hosts directive to run on a particular group. If I go to my inventory hosts file, you can see that I've grouped my CentOS 7 and Ubuntu Bionic machine underneath a group for the operating system. I have a CentOS group and an Ubuntu group. If we go back to our, ho our playbook and we change our hosts directive from star to CentOS, that will ensure that all the tasks in this play run against only the CentOS group. If we change that back, the other way to apply that would be apply a conditional directly to the task. I can say when Ansible OS family is equal to Red Hat, and what that will do is ensure that this task runs against only Red Hat based operating systems like CentOS or Red Hat Enterprise Linux and prevent it from running against uh, Debian or Ubuntu Linux. When you choose either one of these methods will really depend on how many tasks you need to apply it to and whether or not you have a good grouping of your hosts like this that would make it easy to apply that to the hosts directive. In this case, what I'm going to do is apply it to the hosts directive because I want all of the tasks to apply just to CentOS. Let's run this playbook again, and what I expect to happen is that now all of these tasks underneath this play are going to be run only against our CentOS 7 machine. And as you can see in the output here, yes, that's exactly what happened. Our Ubuntu Bionic machine is no longer subject to these particular tasks. Now that we have our EPL repo installed, we can go back over to our system and run that yum search Redis again. And you can see where previously we only had one package available, we now have a whole bunch, and that's because of that new EPL repo. You can see here, the one at the bottom is the one that we want. It's just called Redis, and it's a persistent key value database. Let's go back over and convert this second comment into an Ansible task. I'm gonna make this name, install Redis, and since we're going to be doing basically the same thing as we did for the EPL repo, I'm just gonna copy this whole module directive here. So instead of EPL release, I'm going to change this to Redis. Let's run this playbook now against our host and ensure that Redis is installed. So that playbook's finished running and it's successfully run against our CentOS 7 host. Let's go over and make sure that Redis was installed. I'm gonna do that with yum list Redis. You can see here that we have an installed package heading and underneath we have our Redis package. So we can see here that Redis is installed with version 3.2.12 from the EPL repo. So it was a little long-winded, but that's how you use the yum module to install packages on your system.
Let's install multiple packages using the yum module. So you might be suggesting that we can combine these two tasks into a single task using a loop or something. And you'd technically be right, but what I can suggest is anytime you're managing a CentOS or Red Hat instance, that you have a separate task before you install anything else to ensure that the ePL repo is installed. And the reason is that a lot of the packages that you'd like to install require the ePL repo to be installed before you even try to install the package. So I suggest always leaving this particular task at the top. What we'll do here is install multiple packages in this second task. You might be reaching for the loop keyword, but actually there's a more efficient way using the um module, and that's to change this name directive into a list. I'm going to convert this first Redis item into the first item in the list, and what I'll do for the second item is install python-redis, which is a module that allows Python to communicate with Redis, just as an example. So we'll run that playbook against both against our host, and we'll see what happens. So that playbook's finished running, and I can see that it's been successful against our CentOS 7 host. Let's go over and check that both the packages were installed. I'm going to run yum list python dash redis, and then also redis. Let's run that. We can see here that under the installed packages heading, we have python dash redis as well as redis. So both of our packages were installed. That's how you install multiple packages using the yum module in an efficient way. So how would you install a specific version of a package using the um module? I want to install a specific version of Ruby on the system. The first thing I'm going to do is run over and check which versions are available. I'm going to type yum list Ruby and then I'm going to pass the dash dash show duplicates option which is going to show all available versions not just the latest one. You can see here that we have two available versions of Ruby in here. The first one has a release of 33 and the second one a release of 34. Everything else in the version is the same. By default, when we use the state present directive on the yum module, it's going to install the latest version available, which is this one. Let's say for instance, we have a specific reason why we'd like to install this version of Ruby. What we can do is copy that version string and then in our name, put a dash after the Ruby package name and then paste that specific version string. I'm gonna run that playbook against the host and what I expect to happen now is even though we set state to present, uh, this specific version of Ruby should be installed and not the latest one. So that playbook's finished running now, and I'm going to go back over to the host to ensure that this specific version of the package was installed. I'll run the same yum list Ruby here, and what you can see here is that in the installed packages, what we've got is that 33 release. So the package that we specified for the yum module has been installed, and that's how you install a specific version of a package using the yum module. Let's update a package using the yum module. I'd like to check if there's a newer version of Ruby available and update to it if it is. I'm going to type yum list ruby to check for any newer versions. What we can see here is that our installed version has a release of 33 and there's a newer version available here with a release of 34. So let's update it using the yum module. By default, when we use state present and a version of a package is already installed, Ansible is going to do nothing even if there's a newer version of the package available. If you're sure that you can update the package safely, you can change this state from present to latest. And what that's going to do is instruct Ansible that if there's a newer version of the package available, that it should update to it. Let's run this playbook against our host. And what I expect to happen is our release of 33 to be updated to a release of 34. So our playbook's finished running and it's been successful against our CentOS 7 host. Let's run our yum list Ruby command again. And as you can see here that the available packages area has disappeared and we only have the installed packages, which means we're at the latest version. And as you can see, we have the release of 34 version installed. So that's how you update a package using the yum module. Let's remove a package using the yum module. I'm gonna change this name from install Ruby to remove Ruby. And all we need to do to remove a package is change this state from latest or present to absent. Now, update cache is redundant if we're just going to be removing a package, so we can remove that, but what I suggest replacing it with is auto remove set to true. What the auto remove directive is going to tell yum to do is that any dependencies that were installed along with Ruby that are now no longer required since we're removing Ruby, that yum should remove those automatically. Let's run this playbook against our host, and what I expect to happen is that any Ruby package that was installed on our system to be removed. That succeeded against our host. Let's run over and run yum list Ruby to check that it was removed. So you can see that our installed packages directive has been removed and we only have available packages here. So we have no versions installed, which is what we expected. So that's how you remove a package using the yum module.